Hi everybody, it's Jen with One Stop Apothecary Shop. I have an online paper crafting eBay store for all your paper crafting needs. And I wanted to show you a technique video here of something that I love to use personally and I am now stocking in my store. These are called Lindy's Magicals. They are a highly pigmented powder and they also have a little bit of mica in them so they shimmer and shine. So they're, these are kind of like a color burst where you add the powder and then spray with water and then uh, they react to water. Um, but these are my favorite because of that extra shimmer and shine. So I'm gonna try to keep this video under half hour. I have tons of techniques to show you guys. Uh, if you're following me on YouTube, feel free to check out my store and my special Facebook group. I have listed in the description. And if you're new to me on YouTube, please uh, click the subscribe button. All right, here we go. So when you get your pack, they're gonna look like this and there's gonna be a topper on it. And to get this topper off, I had to get a little creative. You wanna take something hard and pop it off. If you get one angle, there we go. <laughs> Just try it, be careful if you have something sharp that you don't cut yourself. And then these come in cute little jars. And it doesn't look like much powder when you open them up, but a little goes a long way. Like this, this will last you a ton. So this is an Alice in Wonderland theme. So we have Tweedledee denim. And if you, I know it's hard to tell again on video, but this one you can definitely see the shine. This one is Mad Hatter green, mint green. Curious or Sartreuse. We have Queen of Hearts red and teapot purple. All right, so let's get going. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, you guys, cover your surface with a some type of silicone or some type of base, base mat. Okay, and then I usually typically use a brush. Okay, for our first technique, we are going to be using stencil. And this one I believe is by um, the company Joggles. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay it down. You can use pixie spray if you want. You don't have to. I'm gonna get some paper towels handy because I know I'm gonna need those. And you're gonna get your fingers all nice and, and inky. You can kind of tell with mine, I played a little bit with these last night. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is open, open these. And we are gonna use for this one Curiouser and Tweedledee denim. Okay, I think I'm gonna dip, so I'm gonna dip. I use a brush to apply this, and I'm just going to apply the powders kind of all over, kind of where you want. You can also put it in just certain areas. Okay, and here we go with the blue. This one's gonna be a little stronger because it's a really Nice, deep, dark blue. But yeah, you could tell I'm using just tiny, teeny tiny little bits. Okay, and now we're gonna add the water and you're gonna see all this magic happen. Okay, and I think what I'm gonna do here, before I lift it up, I'm gonna soak it with a paper towel. You can also use another sheet of paper if you wanna get two prints out of this, but for today, I think I'm just gonna do one. Okay, and then when you lift it up, voila, very, very cool, very, very fun. And we're gonna let this air dry. I wanna show you one I did yesterday, same colors, and I let this air dry. And I know it's hard to see, but there's definitely some mica in some of this. So yeah, how quick and easy was that? I have no patience. <laughs> My husband teases me about this all the time. And so uh, for someone like me, <laughs> this is an awesome technique. Okay, for this next one, I just wanna show you how I did this one. It was really cool. And I used uh, chartreuse and teapot purple. So I put the stencil down, sprayed it with water, lifted the stencil up, and then added powders, and this is how it came out. <laughs> and I feel like this was like the wow factor. And this would work with a lot of different stencils. 
and it really brought out a lot of the detail. And the mica. I love that, that pigmented powder. Okay, so for our next one, we're going to do something totally different. I'm going to dip and dye some cheesecloth. And I love cheesecloth. I love working with this in my art journaling. You can also add this to cards. I think it adds just a lot of nice texture and kind of gives it that little extra, extra wow. So yeah, and you can find it pretty inexpensive at places. Sometimes I even find it at Goodwill. So for this one, we're gonna use Mad Hatter, Teapot, and Tweedledee. Gotta love these names. Okay. And then also, let's see, for this one, we are gonna make little piles of powder. Now I do know the blue is the most um, dark, so I don't think I'm gonna go quite as heavy on the blue, and I think I'm gonna add some more of the Sartreuse. Okay. So go ahead and add water. You're gonna get this really cool beading effect as the colors mix. And here's the fun part. And you can use gloves if you want to with this. This is so fun. Can you guys see that okay? I hope you can see that okay. All right. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Trying not to get dirty, but there's no point. I'm just, you know what, I'm just going for it. I'm just gonna dig right in and I absolutely love these, these colors together. So yeah, here is your dyed cheesecloth. How fun and wonderful is that? I absolutely love it. And it'll lighten up a little bit when it's dry. Now, I don't like wasting stuff. So on my desk, handy next to me, I keep an old dictionary with pages that I can use in my art journaling. So there's all this droplets. So I go ahead and I pick it up and then I have some really cool effects on my page. So then I have a lot less waste. How cool is that gonna be when it dries? Love it. Okay, so for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna soak it all up, but you can soak up as much as you want. And we're gonna set that over to dry. So you can dye some fabrics with this that I know um, the cheesecloth soaks it right up. So the cheesecloth cloth is absolutely amazing. Okay, couple of things, other things I wanted to show you with this. It's really good for dyeing backgrounds. So to dye a background, you just take your sheet. I won't show you guys because for the sake of time, but, and you just add powder wherever you want, spray it with water. Boom, you got your background. It's that easy. So there's certain things that um, backgrounds are great for cutting out um, dyes. So for this one, this is the, let's see, Tim Holtz Pine Tree, and this one is available in my store. And you can see I use chartreuse and uh, the Mad Hatter Mint. Yep, so there's that one. And then I used another Tim Holtz dye for this next one. This one I think is called Love struck, and this one has an awesome heart on it. And this one, um, I believe I use Queen of Hearts and uh, Tweedledee. Um, yeah, so kind of fun. This one, I use Teapot Purple, and that one by itself. And I wanted just wanted to show you guys this because this is chipboard, and you can dye chipboard with this product as well and give it a nice shine. And then I had some doilies in my drawer next to me. So I was like, why not? So this, I used the swipe technique, kind of like I did with the cheesecloth. And I just swiped it all through. You can decorate those, make backgrounds a cinch. All right, another thing we can do, I can get a little messy. I wanted to show you guys that you can turn these into a paste. I wanna show you couple of the colors. So this is an older paste, but a really good one. Um, pearlescent embossing powder. So this one already has a little bit of shimmer to it. But yeah, I want to show you guys how uh, I'm going to put these off to the side here. How nice these look as paste. Oh, you know what? I added way too. We're not making that much. I'm 
gonna put this one up here and this one up here. Okay, you guys can hopefully see. There we go, now you can see. And all I'm gonna do is mix a little bit of magical in each of these. Now, you don't need a ton and the, the more you put, um, the more vibrant the color. So it's totally up to you how much. I'm guessing with the with the lighter paste, you probably want more for the color to show up. And then with the dark ones, like the blue, I don't think you're gonna need much at all. Let's see, this one, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit more. This one's Mad Hatter. Boy, that's already turning. Look how pretty these are already already turning. That's why they're called magicals. You can use them in so many different ways. I think it'd be really cool to use these with um, glitter paste as well if you wanted to, to give that a try. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. But yeah, do you guys see how little I'm using? Like I said, these jars are going to last forever. So with these, you just kind of want to crunch the little crystals here, I'll move these to the middle so you guys can see a little bit better. Maybe you zoom in. Or not. <laughs> okay. Uh. And, oh, just a reminder too, as I'm busy mixing, uh, my, in my store this week, Lawn Fawn is 20% off. So, feel free to to check those out. Very cool. Look at how pretty this purple is. That one's turning out nice too. And then of course the blue, look at how pigmented this is. I just added a teeny little swipe and you can get, honestly you guys, there's really no need to buy colored embossing paste because you, you can dye them with so many things. Just have the white, um, in your stash is the big one. I mean, you can dye them with dyeing some watercolors. You can dye them probably with, I'm assuming acrylic paint would probably work. But yeah, if you're frugal like me and like to save some money, just keep, keep the white in your stash. Oh, you can also dye, um, instead of using embossing paste, you can also use uh, white gesso as well as a paste because it's a little bit of a thicker medium. All right, so there you go. So there's all the pretties turned into paste. And of course, I gotta show you a sample. Yesterday, I believe, let's see, I used these three and I made a cute little heart. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Okay, now I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try not to dip my arm right in those things and make a mess. Okay, a couple more ways. You guys, we can use this. This one's kind of fun. This one, we are going to do an embossed resist technique. And this one is awesome. So I'm using this stamp set by Studio Katya. And Simon says, unfortunately, I think it's a stamp timber. Um, but in case you guys were curious and wanted to know, so with, this one's kind of cool. So it's a bouquet of flowers, which you saw. I know it's hard to see now. Let me see, we're gonna use, let's see, we're gonna use Mad Hatter and Tweedledee and tea, Teapot. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is over the leaves, I'm going to drop some Mad Hatter and try to do this as quick as I can, because it is, Kind of a bigger image. And like I said, you don't, you just don't need much. Not really at all. Okay, so there's those. And then with the flowers, whoop, I'm going to drop some on different flowers. Some purple over here. Maybe, maybe this one. Maybe, let's see, let's do this one. And then a couple of the big ones, I'm gonna do the blue. And again, the, oh, I might have added. I'm a little crazy over there. 
With the blue, you sure don't need much. <laughs> the blue goes a long way. Okay, now here's the fun. I'm gonna go ahead and add the water. Ooh, yeah, this has the wow factor. And there we go. <laughs> now with this, I don't really like all this stuff over here. So you can kind of dab it and clean it up a little bit. Kind of do what you want. Um, but yeah, that's why this is called em Emboss Resist. So what I did, I should have told you what I did at first. What I did was I took the stamp and then I Versamarked it using Versamark ink. And then I embossed it just with white embossing powder. Oh, and all the paper I'm using today is um, Canson watercolor paper for your guys' information. And then I um, embossed it on white. And then as you add the powders with the water, that emboss resists the color and then you have that that uh, that design. So here's the one I did last night using the same colors that was allowed to dry. So you guys can see, stunning, stunning. And then I actually practiced with another set too. This is Curiouser, Teapot, and Queen of Hearts. Same exact image. So yeah, that to me, that emboss resist absolutely has the wow factor. So that's how you do that one. And I have one more technique to quickly show you one more way you can use this very versatile powder. This one, you can simply just watercolor with it. So for this one, I used uh, Pink Fresh's Go For It stamp. I chose that one. I'm gonna grab one of my watercolor brushes that has water in it. Okay, and then for here, you can make your own little palette again. So I will use, you know what? We've used purple a lot. I think we're gonna use Queen of Hearts for this one for the with the red. Okay, and you can make your own little watercolor. So you pick it up and you just start brushing. And again, I emboss this image. And if I have no patience, like I said, and I'm gonna go outside the lines. <laughs> so I'm just gonna deliberately go outside the lines. It is okay, guys. And it gives it a nice like watercolory type look. So yeah, it is as easy as that. And I'm just using one of my premium watercolor brushes. It has water already in it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then I think for the leaves, boy, this is going quick. I like how fast this watercolor is. If I was to stay in the lines, obviously it would take a while longer. I, oh, maybe you guys have more patience than I do. But I don't. Do I want to use chartreuse? You know what? I might use Mad Hatter for this one. That green is so they're both pretty. Boop. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. So yeah, and you can do the same things with the leaves. Just kind of do a messy, a messy look, but you totally don't have to. Just kind of do your own thing. You can do the leaves different colors. You can do the flowers different colors. Just kind of, kind of make it your own. So yeah. Ooh, and you know what might make this look even a little bit better? Yes. We're gonna color the stems in. Oops. Ah! Oh no, I had some on my finger. Just ignore that part. Pretty pretty please. We have just enough to finish the stems. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. So you see how fast that was. All right, guys, I believe that is it for today. I am signing off. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, you learned something new. And uh, I will see you next time. Take care.